God did it again. I went from being unemployed for almost a year during COVID-19 quarantine to getting a job that I could never imagine that is literally going to set me up for the rest of my future. Hello and welcome. My name is Kristen. Super excited that you're here. If you're new, definitely say hi by hitting the subscribe button. Stop talking like that. If you don't subscribe, just, just listen to the testimony and be encouraged, okay? Let me be myself. All right, so you guys know in the beginning of March of 2020, I was a college professor teaching psychology and I quit my job not knowing the next week we would be on quarantine shutdown. And when I did that, it was because I was making too little money, too little as a college professor and I didn't want to keep doing that. So I had a job set up afterwards, but because of quarantine um, and not being able to leave your house, they canceled the job and said, we, you know, we can't hire you. So I was like, okay, fine. I had a savings account. I said, I still had maybe two more checks coming in from the college I worked at because they owed me some money. Then I had a dream about a sports company that I was going to run. And so I got busy doing that now i got busy i was putting in work wasn't getting paid i got busy i was putting in work i had my first partnership with doordash um i was giving out food gift cards to athletes i was really there was a lot of great things happening and a lot of movement and then all of a sudden things kind of slowed down so money that i thought was coming in did not come in I had about 10 employees, I had interns that the money that we were gonna use to pay them didn't come in. And I also didn't know if I was going to make it to like July because I thought I would have a job by then or some type of income. So I went through almost half of my savings by July. And then it got to the point where I was like, okay, next month, how is this going to turn out, Lord? Because I got rent, I got all these things. And I got an, um, a notice of eviction letter. Now, it was an automated letter from my apartment complex, but it freaked me out. I literally packed all my stuff. I packed all my stuff. I was about two and a half weeks late on paying my rent because I just believed God would come through. Um, and I didn't have to use the last of my savings. And I even asked my church for money, didn't get a lot of help. And I even asked a friend if I could move in with them. And I was like, yeah, you know, I'll move out by the end of the month. And she basically was like, oh, I have someone else trying to, who's gonna stay there. And so I stayed here. I found out that you can go through, now I don't know if it's like this everywhere, but you need to go through your county or your township. I'm from LA and I moved to the sticks and I went through my township. I had to fill out an application, burial plots, 401k, Roth IRA, savings, inheritance. They ask you, where did you live two months ago? Like they, they go through everything. It's an invasion of privacy. And that's how I learned through going through the township of applying for rent assistance. That's how I learned. And I prayed, Lord, I don't know enough about money. I know how to hustle but I don't know about long sustaining money. I would like to learn about money. And, and they paid my rent for me for two months. So that's how God provided. Now, the only issue is the next month I was like, I got a job and I got a job. It was really toxic. It was really horrible. I only was there for a month, but that one job really affected me and prevented me from getting unemployment. So that $600 stint, you know, unemployment, that $300 unemployment, I was not able to get that because they said I made too little from that previous job. I was only getting $81 a week. $81 a week. And anytime I would call and try and see like, hey, is there, is there an issue? Is there something wrong? Is there any back pay? They'd be like, no, you don't qualify for more assistance because you made too little. And that job that I was taking at a warehouse was about $15 an hour. And I was like, isn't the point of unemployment to, to help people? How do you have to make a certain amount? And I was like, okay, 81 a week, fine. Guys, I really just don't know how, the, how I'm still here. I'm still in the same place. I don't know how I'm here. As I leave that job, my boss, how I really left, 
was a lot of manipulation, toxic work environment. My boss cussed me out and I was like, this isn't going to work. And then he got more offended that I fired him. And then he said more things. And I was like, do you see how you're talking to me? You're not allowed to talk to me like that. I left um, and I'm driving home. I get in a car accident. It was raining. I hydroplaned in a circle, crashed into a guardrail, taken um, in an ambulance to the emergency room. I had an abrasion on my left knee and my car was totaled. I mean, smashed, destroyed. That was it. About maybe two weeks. No, a month later. So I even I couldn't work because I couldn't I didn't have a car or anything like that. And I was in a lot of pain. About a month later, I get the check um, from my insurance company and they were able to give me much more than I ever thought I was going to get for the car. And honestly, all the jobs I applied to, um, all the cars that I tried to get, nothing was working out. And so I had no choice but to use my car money to pay my rent for the next two to three months. And yes, my rent got provided. Um, but I was like, Lord, why? Why is this so difficult? Why is this so hard? Um, and especially with $81 a week, that was covering like my phone bill, my my light bill. One day I they turned my all my electricity off and it was freezing in my apartment, freezing. But I had some other money stashed away and I was able to use that to pay off um, my light bill and my electricity bill. It was a really rough 2020. And then I applied for this job in real estate, um, doing real estate acquisition. And I apply, I did a, I did a whole survey, I did a questionnaire and I get a reply. We, we like what we saw in, the, in your exam. We wanna talk to you. I talked to the guy on the phone for about two hours and he was just like, whoa, I really love your confidence. You sound like a great salesperson. And I told him, and he said it was commission only. I said, well, if you wanna bring me on, I would need $3,000 for the first 90 days and then I'll go commission only. He was like, yeah, I can do that. That sounds great. And then I said, and then he started saying how much, you know, he can be difficult to work with at times. When people show you who they are, believe them. And so we hung up the phone and he was like, I would love to meet you and talk with you. What's next steps? And I was like, okay, let me think about it. I asked my parents, I asked good friends. They were like, go forward. Instead of us doing a Zoom call, I buy a Lyft and I go meet him in another town. We meet at a co-working space. He tells me like people on average make 70,000 at minimum a year. The only thing I would have to do is close the deal. I didn't have to do any you know, cold leads. And I was like, this makes sense. And he was like, I need someone who wants to make $125,000 a year, which is only closing about 10 houses a week. And I was like, yes, I can do it. We meet in person and then I did show my hand. I explained that I was in a car accident and I didn't have a car. And so I know that had him look at me sideways like, well, then how are you going to go show the houses to close the deal? And I, the confidence he had in the first call, like he wanted to hire me then. When we had the second interaction face to face, I noticed that things changed. And he was like, give me a call. Let's set up the final interview. I'll have one of my salesmen um, do an interview with you. His salesman never called me that Monday, they never called me Tuesday. I text him like, hey, um, you know, your salesman hasn't called me. And he just gave me the run around. Oh, they're sick. Oh, they're this. Nobody ever called. And my thing is, sir, just say like, it's not a good fit. But I waited by the phone. And because I have enough intelligence, I was like, yo, he's playing me, but he doesn't want to be the bad guy. So one day he calls me and he's like, hey, I'm still interviewing people. I haven't made a decision yet. I'll know next week. But what's up with you? Like, um, do you have any other options? And I was like, yeah, I have some options. And I named a couple agencies that I was talking with and that I was going to get my real estate license. He's like, OK, great. Like, I'm so glad real estate license. And after I hung up the phone, I realized what he did. He wanted to alleviate his guilt to be like, does she have other options? Because I'm not going to hire her. And I fell for that trap. People don't need to know what moves you're making outside of them. Just keep that in mind. I hung up the phone. When I tell you, like, I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep, I was very sad. I had high hopes. I started budgeting money that hadn't come in yet. And I thought this was an answered prayer. I thought this was, this was it. And it wasn't. 
it the week before when I thought I was gonna get the job, I told my Bible study group and I was like, yeah, guys, I'm about to be making six figures. God is good. And they were like, yeah, yeah. I came back after he didn't call and I praise God because shame is an unclean spirit. Shame and guilt are sent from the enemy. And when we were going around during testimony time, everyone, you know, giving their praises, I raised my hand and I said, yeah, I want to give thanks to God for removing shame. I know last week I told all of you that I had a great interview and I was going to get a job making six figures and God came through. Well, that job did not come through and it's not going to happen. And although I feel disappointed, I know that God knew that that wasn't going to be a good fit. That probably was going to be a toxic boss. Um, the money he said we were going to be making, probably we weren't. Because if he had all that money, why didn't I meet him at his office instead of a co-working space? All these things. I was like, so God probably saw a lot of things in advance and he shut it down. And I was like, I do feel bad, but I just thank God that I can share this with you all. Thank you for your prayers and support. It is embarrassing. Um to retire from mental health, not teaching, thinking things are gonna turn around. And this was a year that really spun me in out of my element. And my Bible study group, they were so supportive. They were like, wow, thank you for your honesty and your transparency. I don't know if I would have even been able to say that. Um, and I think, you know, it was just so much love. Somebody was on that video that they don't really come often. And they text me separately and said, hey, Kristen, I heard your testimony. I'm sorry you're going through all this, but my job is hiring if you're looking for work. And I think they even have remote positions. And I said, hey, yeah, sure. Didn't know what he did. He sent me an email. He asked for my email. I gave it to him. He sends me an email that same night. I see it. This was maybe Friday night. I see it. I don't touch it till Tuesday. Mind you, I wasn't going to fill it out at all. But I filled it out. And then about a week later, I get a call back um, to schedule a phone interview. And I'm like, okay, cool. I do the phone interview. And when she gets on the phone with me, she's telling me not just the position that my friend gave me, but she said, there's another position. And this position has some more money. You would be able to get licensed as a financial investment broker. We will pay for your license. And at the end of the year, it takes about eight months. You'll be licensed and you will be able to legally give advice and advise people on financial investments. And I'm like, hold up, licensed investment broker and legally be able to give people advice on how to multiply their money. And you're going to train me to do it. I'd like to hear more about that position. And it was more money than the original position. I told my friends what happened and I said, yeah, I'm working for the name of the company. And they were like, what? That's one of the biggest investment firms in the nation. I was like, what? My friend was like, I have my Roth IRA with them. They are a really great company. She said, I would wanna work for them. I'm like, what? I have no experience in the finance industry. Yes, I have a master's in mental health, but I'm completely shifting gears. I am getting ready to learn about all these things and I'm learning how big this company is. A company that two weeks before, I was um, reading for a new movie because you guys also know I'm an actress. You guys can click the link below to watch my movie. Still got joy on Amazon Prime. Thanks. But I was reading for a movie and the character I was playing worked at the name of the company that I work for now. Listen to me. And in the movie, she makes a lot of money. And that's the only, that's the very first time I heard about this company. And that's why when I applied to it, I was like, oh my goodness, the character I played worked here. She made a lot of money and it was definitely with investments. Um... And I was just like, I was just shocked at that parallel. And so I said, well, you guys, I have my final interview in about two weeks. My friends were like, this is it. My friends were like, I've applied to that company before and I didn't get it. So the fact that you're getting in, you got a direct referral, 
They were like, go for it. So I prayed and this investment company, when I say you can't just interview, they send you stuff to study before the final interview. They send you how they want to interview you. It's called the star method. So they want you to set the stage. They want you to tell them um, the teachable moment. They want you to describe the action you took and then they want you to describe the result. If you don't respond and give answers like that, it doesn't count and it doesn't matter. They don't want anything else besides that. And so I stayed up and I studied and I prepared all my, my scenarios. And I also wanted a place that was big on culture, race, and identity. And so when I had my interview, I had it with two people remotely. Um, I walked away from that interview and I was like, yo, I killed that. God, you did that. There was stuff coming out of me that I was like, what? The girl who, one of the women who interviewed me, her background was in neuroscience. And I was like, oh, mine is in um, marriage and family therapy, mental health, like really understanding how when people's finances are low, their mood is low. You're most likely to become abusive when your money is low. You're most likely to cheat on somebody when your money is low. You're less likely to give attention to your kids when your money is low. So I would love to learn about investments and how it works and teach it to others to really expand and grow our communities. She was like, wow. I really like how you associated the brain and trauma and we were talking about the stuff I already talk about in mental health and I was just like wow and then I was proud of myself because I also asked like so I noticed that you're I really appreciate how your company has statistics on race most of the videos I watched didn't have people of color or black people is there a reason why I don't want to work for a company that says they care about diversity by statement but not by action and they were like, wow, thank you so much for asking that. They said they have a HBCU alliance program to actually help influx African-Americans in the finance industry. And they said, unfortunately, most of the African-Americans that they come across, don't they don't think, this is what they said, they don't think that they are qualified to get in finance. I'm gonna help change that. Um, so I just was, I felt great afterwards and I was like, Lord, your will. And, um, Two weeks went by, I didn't hear anything. My friend told me to follow up and they called and said, we would like to offer you the position to be a financial investment broker in training. At one of the largest investment companies for a, for a company that I just played a character who worked there and made a lot of money. This is the power, the Bible, I don't know where, but it says it. The Bible talks about if you are able to help someone, don't say that you'll pray for them, actually meet their need. And I just really wanna shout out to my friend Daniel from my Bible study group, thank you Daniel, who referred that. Um, I also praise God for the ability to be transparent and honest and open when certain things don't work out. And it was the ability to not let the enemy muzzle my mouth that allowed me to open my mouth and get my need met. I'm excited to be learning about money. I'm excited to flip my money, grow my money. I'm excited to share with you guys what I learn, and I'm excited to be licensed. I do therapy on the side. Um, I started doing therapy like the last resort because I retired from mental health. But I have clients. I was able to make you know a couple G's in less than a month on that, and now I have this um, this job that I'm starting. So I share this to say that. Sometimes what you're going through is not just for you. Sometimes what you're going through is for people to also see God's work in you. And sometimes your blessing is on the other side of shame. Sometimes your miracle is on the other side of removing guilt. The enemy wants you to be isolated. God doesn't. He wants you to be in community. He wants you to open up your mouth. And for those of you who know that your job is hiring, extend that grace in my bible study group he doesn't even live in the same state as me so i will be able to work from home i still don't have a car i'm also gonna go to my friend's wedding in jamaica i have two friends getting married in jamaica and i already set to go there before i got this job they accommodated me they accommodated me and i also give glory to god that regardless of my schedule he still gave me a yes so i really hope that you are encouraged I hope that you're inspired. I hope you know that even with as many degrees and skills, life will rock you at times. And I hope you watch these videos because when I'm popping, popping, you're, you're going to know I'm humble because of the craziness I've had to go through. Um, do I feel like I deserve this? 
No, of course I don't. Will I do it all over again? No, of course not. Have I learned lessons that I'm willing to share as a vessel of the Lord? Absolutely. And I pray that this is an encouragement to you. This job is truly, it's truly a miracle. And I pray the same for you. My name is Kristen. And if this was a blessing, I just ask that you share it with one person. And if you want to say hi, you can like and subscribe. Healing looks good on you. But do you see my hair though? This is the Cardi B hair mask. Go watch my other video. This is the bounce. Woo! Leave me alone. Leave me alone.